cold. Right. This is Omar for Box Nation. Two times in two days with Gareth Ray Davis. Rock and roll with Box Nation, baby. Rock Nation TV rules. And look at the new deal. We don't squeal, we just do a new deal. Queensbury, Box Nation TV, and DAZN. There you go, how's that? Very good, Gareth. Let me set the scene. We're at Milo's restaurant, one of Frank's favourites uh, in the in heart. Piccadilly. In the heart of Central London, in Piccadilly, whatever you like. Well, we're, we're, we're actually in St James's Street, aren't we, in fact? All right, do you want to give the postcard out? Or? No, I can't remember the exact postcard, but I will give you one in a minute. Go on, give it, because you've got your book launch. No, no, I'm going to get you to ask me questions. I have got a book launch Thursday night. I'm very proud to, to show you Call of the Warrior. Yeah. Call of the Warrior, book by myself and Sonia Jasinski. It's been five years' work, 256 pages, black and white, huge coffee table book. As I've told you, weighs over two kilos, this book. Very proud of it. 29 essays, including the introduction, the foreword by Joe Calzaghe, all the principal characters of the sport today, and a deep dive into what is the call of the warrior. The photographs are extraordinary. Behind the scenes, in the ring, in dressing room, um, 28 major figures from the sport today. Shout out Sonia for that. And a shout out to Sonia for those amazing photographs with Louis Kassam, Chris Lloyd, and Carlo Chianti. Who? Carlo Chianti. You always do your pronunciations. Well, that's because I'm a polyglot, as you know. And it, it's been a lot of work. We've got a book launch for this on Thursday. You're very welcome to come if you're watching this. We've got a book launch at the Queen's Pub uh, on the corner of Primrose Hill Broadway, Camden NW1, obviously on the edge of Primrose Hill Park. It's a brilliant pub. We've got loads of friends and guests coming. 6 to 8 p.m. Come and talk to me about boxing and buy a book and get it signed by me. Maybe a great Christmas present for one of your loved ones or for yourself. Well done on the... Link in the story. Yeah, I'll put a link into, into this video. Well done on releasing The Call of the Warrior. You can put that down now. I know you meant the mic, the book, but I just want to have a little... I'll just show you a little flip through. Just presented... Actually, this one today, this is Frank Warren. Frank Warren's over there. And this is the, oh, this is Frank Warren's copy. We should get him in, really. Well, he's, he's been over there already. Usyk, the final guy of the day, Frank Warren. There he is over there. He's just about to start. I have spoken to him about the book. Oh, all right. Um, he's, he's pleased with it. He said he, why is he always last, he said, but it's in alphabetical order, so he's lost one. Really is um, been put together. I wrote the essays. I didn't construct or create the book but Sonia and her team and Hail Mary Publishing very proud of of what we've created Empress Printers in London Hail Mary Publishing as I say and Sonia Jasinski have done an amazing job and I am over the moon I'm absolutely made up with this final product I didn't realize how much I would love it I feel like I'm cradling a baby creation in my arms Wow you should be in the promotion business Hopefully, but please buy one for your loved ones for Christmas. They will love the gift. You can flick through it and read any different essay on any person at any time. Um, and if I don't seem proud of it, I really am very, very proud. No, well done on it. Cheers, Thank brother. You. Thank you. Anyways, what did you take away from this lunch with Frank Warren and the guys at DAZN? Alfie Sharman was here. What did you take away? Perfect timing. Pete Oliver was here as well. Alfie Sharman, Frank Warren and George Warren. Perfect timing. Um, Frank was ahead of, his, ahead of the game when he created Box Nation all those years ago. Um, it's onwards and upwards, 150 shows a year on Box, on, of, on, not oh, on Box Nation, on, on the Zone with uh, Matchroom, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy promotions and obviously also now with uh, the Queensbury promotions. Um, it's really big, it's a really powerful platform and I think what Frank batted back today was people's adversity to change. Um, and I think the more boxing that's on one platform, the better for us. Yes, you need rivals, but I think people will, it'll be a go-to place for big boxing and generic boxing and, and general boxing. So, no, I think it's, uh, it's interesting today, big media turnout for this over lunch, as you say, here at Milo's, Milo's. Um, beautiful meal. Um, 
and a celebration, Frank Warren went to Sky Sports in 95, 1995, and as he said at the time, people said, oh, you're taking it away from the mainstream. You're taking it away from ITV. But look at the success he had with Ricky Hatton. Huge numbers all the way to uh, Hatton becoming a massive mainstream star. Then creating Box Nation in 2013. Yeah, had a stint at Satanta. Uh, going to Satanta, yes. Yeah, I remember that period as well. I worked for Satanta myself as well. Um, the, Sky, uh, the Box Nation period, then the Elysian with BT Sport, now TNT Sport in 2017. Nothing lasts forever, and I think they're moving at just the right time. They're, as I say, they're ahead of the game. This is the perfect time to go digital, fully digital. Yeah. There was a, a few questions from the print guys, which includes you, yourself, but you didn't ask these questions. I, I guess the, the key point from them was, look, at the moment, currently, they don't have, don't have Premier League or Champions League rights. Uh, in the UK, um, those are with Sky, TNT Sports and Amazon, I believe as well. They get a few Premier League games a season. Um, so how do you get the casual fan, the general sports fan to come onto the zone? Can you answer that? Yeah, well, as Frank Warren explained, and I agree with him, when boxing's big, it's really big and you get the mainstream. It's peaks and troughs. Um, but I think... I think the argument is without football that the way that it's always been done is boxing's the gravy alongside the big football, the Champions League, the the, the Premier League, and so um, there's always that argument going to sit there. It's always going to be critiqued, but I think if you listen to what DAZN have got to say, boxing's one of their leading sports. It's very much an internet sport. It's very much a digital viral sport. And I think that's where it will succeed. It's found its highway. It's found its lane. Um, we shall see what happens. Do they need football one day, you think? Does yeah, they w I think they'll go for football. I mean, they've got they'll have it. They've got they had, great, Liga, uh, they had great success with the Japanese league where, where they see, seeded a lot of those things. They've got La Liga. Um, Syria. Yeah, they've got Syria. So they've got, they've got those things. And it wouldn't surprise me at some point to see them buy into certain amounts of football but um, there's enough big people will complain that maybe they have to pay for some pay-per-views but basically you're going to be paying for DAZN's sports platform and then probably four pay-per-views a year I'd imagine I don't know that but that's what I'm imagining I think the more you need a rival but as I say I feel that for the opportunity Queensbury have landed on their feet with it because they can go global now as well, which they weren't before. So, big day for them. Big, and it's the perfect storm, as I say, with the zone in Queensbury. Yeah, which starts in uh, April 2025. Just away from this, Gareth, um, we've seen Joseph Parker on TalkSport actually call out Daniel Dubois. Big time. Well, it's a fight we've talked about in the past. It's a really good fight. I really like it. Um, Speaking to Frank today, he said that Daniel and him, as they would, they're the champion. IBF world champion they've got options and they're looking at all options yeah of course they are but those two, those are the two outside the two big names in the division who fight on December the 21st um, they are the two most resurgent names in the sport right now so um, Dubois and Parker are flying high it's a great fight it's a big it's a stadium event Parker's almost a, a favoured Brit now isn't he um, and he'll bring that whole Tyson Fury entourage with him. If they get the, Fabio Wardley's even been mentioned Frank in the same out. breath as as Daniel Dubois, he's, he's ruled that out. Ruled out. No, I, get, I get it, but he was mentioned at the beginning or the end of last week in the same breath. It's not the right fight right now for Fabio Wardley, frankly. Well, Fabio, this guy said to Frank, "We want that fight. We'll put our name in the hat." But Frank said that one day between two massive punches, two Brits can be built into a Wembley Stadium fight. It's not a Wembley fight right now. I agree. I agree. It's, and it's better for them uh, if they hold off a so little bit. So if it's not Joseph Parker, what other options is Frank talking about? For Daniel. Yeah, if we go for the top 15 in the IBF, can you just... Let's go for him, actually. Let's go for it. Excuse me. So Frank, can I just uh, Frank? Oh my God. Oh my you can God. call me Frank, Shun. So you can call me Frank. 
<laughs> so used to it. Yes, son. Uh, yes, young man. <laughs> It's a really bad impression. It is a really bad impression. Your Eddie impression is good, though, actually. What, what's that, mate? What, are you saying I'm a geezer from uh, Brentwood? Yeah, I'll tell you. Don't my hair look pretty? Don't my hair look pretty? But you know I went to private school. Play a bit of cricket. Play a bit of cricket, you know? Tell you, Parsons, it's all about aura, and you haven't got one yet. Okay, he's is that right fair? There, is that fair enough? I know he's just a bit. Okay, so number three. Is that a good Eddie then? Your Eddie, which is quite hard because it's generic, is good. Your Frank one's pretty poor. Frank one's so. So I just made up for it with the, with the Eddie one then. Come on then. Yeah. Let me read out the ratings. Yeah, go on. Okay, so three is Ajit Cabello. Don't mind that. Four is Martin Bacoli. Don't mind that. Five is Gilet Zhang. Don't mind that. Six is Frank Sanchez. They might go for that. Seven, which I think is a real possibility, is FAA Jagba. And I'll tell you why in a second. Eight is Anthony Joshua, he's ruled himself out. Nine is Philip Hergovic, he's already beat him. Ten is Derek Chisora, he's got a fight penned in, so it won't be him. Eleven is Otto Wallin. Otto Wallin could be one. Twelve is Fabio Wardley, he's ruled Is this a voluntary? Yeah, it's a voluntary defence. It's a voluntary, uh, yeah. Uh, Twelve is Fabio Wardley, Frank said that won't happen. Thirteen is Jared Anderson, but very much doubt it of a loss. He's not going to get a world title shot. Right? 14 is Guido Vianello with the IBF. Yeah, that's a possibility. He's looked good and he's looked good. He, he beat Makhmadov. He did ma beat Makhmadov and I remember when he was a very, very highly rated um, sparring partner a couple of years back of Tyson Fury who had amazing things to say about him. 15 he's, he's really matured Gui um, Guido has, yeah. Really matured. And Guido. he was had him morally so that's an yeah. easy fight to make. Yeah. Fifteenth uh, is just as soon as fighting in Australia soon. Yeah. So if, as, if I go through that list, you got Vianello. Well, there's about six people you could choose. Uh, from that list. Probably not. Look, well, look at look. If we go Bacoli, Zhang, Caballel, top class fights. But yeah. if I'm Daniel Dubois having a voluntary, and I'm Frank and Gwynja, I'm probably looking and thinking, why would we take? But where's it going to be, and how are you going to sell it, and how are you going to make money? Well, out of it? you've got in the frame. Where's that fight going to be? Riyadh. When? February. February 22nd. Yeah. Joseph Parker, FAA Jagba, Guido Vianello, Otto Volin, I think are the realistic options there. Yeah, Jagba's them. a good one. It's going to be exciting. He comes to punch, doesn't he? Frank Sanchez so showed how easy it is to outbox him, though, if you've got the skills. Remember? Yeah. On the undercard of Wilder and Fury, Fury and Wilder. Um, I wouldn't mind that fight at all. And you seem to be leading me into the, into the cage on this one. Well... I don't mind Caballel or Bacoli or that, that's I, th or I just Parker. think if you're taking a voluntary, that's a risky fight to take. Not saying that Daniel wouldn't fight. Daniel them. fight anyone at the I moment. know, but just from a from a business point of view, you've you're got the your king. business hat on. So you're the king. You're yeah, the IBF champion. Yeah, Why would yeah. you take that as a voluntary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I do understand where you're coming from. And also, Caballel and Bacoli have been ordered to fight. So Frank's not hinting who it is at the moment, but the announcement's imminent. I'm leaning towards a Jagba and I don't have a clue about this. I've not been told You don't anything. know why, yeah, but... Um, I think a Jagba might be the one. Yeah, I d I w it wouldn't surprise me. But it wouldn't surprise me if it was Parker either. That's a blockbuster fight. It is a big fight. And I think that's what... Who's favourite in that Parker, fight, Gareth? It's a 50-50. Does Parker out box? The no, Parker's bigger. No, it's just a very close fight. It's hard to call. Really hard to call. But at the moment, the form guy is both of them. Anything else you want to add? No. One more plug. <laughs> the Call of the Warrior. The link will be in this story. The link's on my bio on my Instagram, gareth.adavis. Um, please buy the book, because we want to do a volume two as well, um, which will fund doing volume two. It, it, it really is a beautiful Christmas present uh, or present for, for a loved one. Or if you love boxing books, I think you'll love this. Thank you very much. In the air tonight. Oh Lord. Oh Lord.